How you doing today? Well, I can tell before you open that box, it's gonna be something creepy, right? I have an original 19th century vampire killing set. Pops, I wouldn't touch that. Seems creepy. Okay. I came to the pawn shop today to sell my 19th century vampire killing set. I want to sell the set because my wife at this point, she's getting a little creeped out by it. I value the vampire killing set at around $9,000. However, I know they need to make a profit and I'm negotiable on it. Okay, it's definitely different. Where in the world did you get it? Well, I own an antique company and I came upon this on one of my trips in France. So why were they made? Well, a lot of times you would have businessmen traveling to Transylvania and they would go to shops and have these things made and put together in order to protect them while they were traveling. This about blood-sucking creatures have been around for thousands of years. But still, believing it so much that you would go out and buy a kit like this, now that's crazy. So we have some crucifixes. The crucifixes are to keep the vampires away. We have some bottles of holy water. We have a dagger here, which is perhaps to decapitate them, a mirror. Silver bullets, a few stakes, a hammer. The garlic, salt. The salt is actually because vampires had obsessive compulsive disorder, and they believe that you'd put the salt in front of their way. The vampires will then have to count every grain of salt so to buy some time before they were attacked. Sort of like the count in Sesame Street. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't believe in vampires, but I definitely believe in making money. The vampire genre is probably more popular right now than ever before. And with Halloween coming up, there could be a market for this piece. I've done some research. I think it's worth around $9,000. There's some stuff that doesn't make sense to me. We have some things that refer to Bram Stoker's novel. They didn't have the mirror before Stoker. Right. He came up with Dracula in the 1890s, but we have a gun right here that was made in the 1830s. 1890s. They didn't even make parts for this anymore. They had really cheap revolvers. You can tell this kit is from the 1890s or later because it's got vampire stuff invented by Bram Stoker. And if you were putting together a vampire kit from the 1890s, why would you put in an old obsolete gun from the 1830s? It doesn't add up, and that's how you know this kit is fake. My conclusion on the kit is much later than 1900. That being said, though, there's something that sort of intrigues me about the gun. I got a gun dealer that's in town. I'd really like him to look at this gun. OK. Someone did an amazing job of putting this thing together, but the devil is in the details, and there's a couple of things that tell me this thing is fake. Luckily for this guy, the gun alone might cover his losses. Joe, how's it going? Good, Rick. Good to see you again. I own Ashman's Pioneer Market in Fillmore, Utah. We specialize in guns, shooting equipment, at the old country store in town. Well, this is what I called you about. Oh, very interesting. That looks like a how to pistol. These were basically made for tiger hunting. If they'd wounded the tiger and they'd ran out of shots with their rifle, then they would have this to protect themselves. It's fairly unusual that it's over and under. The barrels are superimposed, the top barrel over the bottom barrel. Most of the ones you see, the barrels are side by side. Okay, so it's right around 1840-ish, it looks? I would say so, yeah, 1840, 1850. You think that'd work for killing vampires? It would be marginal for a vampire. I'd say it'd be marginal for a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> this gun being a 50 caliber would have been more like for a smaller animal in the 150, 200 pound size. This is the wrong caliber bullet right here for this gun, isn't it? The gun is a 50 caliber, but the balls look more like 38 caliber, and it doesn't fit the time period at all. It's obviously a put together kit that was just made to sell to somebody. Well, Rick, what are you thinking on this? Is it something you're gonna wanna buy, or? I just wonder what it was worth. The how to pistols go for pretty good money. They're so rare and you just don't hardly ever see them. You could be talking ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. But uh, the condition is not very good. The metal is pitted evenly all over the whole gun, almost unnaturally. The aging on it doesn't seem normal. It doesn't have wear in the places where it would normally have wear. It almost would make you wonder if if it had been antiqued maybe or something. Antiquing is when you artificially age something. The pitting on the metal was probably created by some sort of acid. Even though the gun was really old, someone wanted to make it look like it had a lot of use. A gun in this condition would maybe sell for 500 to maybe 1,000 on its very best day. Thanks a lot, Joe. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. See you guys again. Thank you. It obviously is an old gun, and they didn't need to make it look older. It would have been worth more if they'd have left it alone. OK, I mean, that's what the gun's worth. The kit is just really weird. It's just one of those things. 
I mean, I, it's probably worth money to somebody, but... They sell at auction for good money. I, I'm sure someone would buy it at auction. I just... This is great quality. I think it's a cool one. Uh, it, it's really cool, it's really neat, but it's one of those things where you have to be really careful when you sell it. They were made at a time for people okay. who believe in vampires. I just don't know if I could sell it. Unless you want to sell the gun for 100 bucks. I'm not going to sell it, break it up, but I appreciate your time. Appreciate you coming down. It was nice. Thanks. All right, thanks for coming in, Thank you. This kit would look amazing in my store, but it's just one of my rules. I don't buy fake stuff if I can help it.